You've had a great time shooting with your X-T20, your X-T2, dare I say at some point your X-T3, whatever. What do you do next with those raw files? You want to squeeze the best out of them. Well, I'm going to show you just one option across a series of a few videos showing what I do with my Fuji X raw files. Once you've got your raw files off the camera, onto your PC or Mac, in my case, Mac, you need to do a few things first. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with just a whole bunch of memory hugging files. <laughs> and you'll just be going crazy trying to go through these hundreds of images, trying to work out which are the ones that you really wanna keep. You might wanna try a piece of software called Photo Mechanic. This software can do a whole bunch of things, including ingest or getting them off your camera onto your hard drive. But what we're gonna be looking at is opening up a contact sheet. So we've got some RAWs here from about 2015, I believe. And this is just a complete folder of unedited RAW files. Now I have clearly dealt with this job, all done and dusted, but these are the original rafts. All I've done actually in this case is renamed them in Bridge, but to all intents and purposes, otherwise fresh batch. Now what I like about Photo Mechanic is, it brings them all up quickly, and this isn't even a particularly fast MacBook Air at all. I've got a Mac that I work on over there. But you know what? With this, I can do so much more than I actually do at the moment. And I'll show you this one menu, for example. You can sort by capture time, modification time, and all these different other variables. Pretty cool. You can view RAWs and JPEGs together. You've got a lot of other tools that come into play. But what we're gonna do is just go through the culling stage. What I mean by that, if you're kind of new to this, is we're just looking to get rid of the trash and stick with the keepers. Now, I'm not gonna do this whole thing, but I'm just gonna show you briefly. Once I've opened the contact sheet up, I can see the whole lot there. I'm happy with that. I press the space bar and I can see that that shot is not ideal. Now, if I click over here, I can get a full screen version. Click back and on this side, I've got my info. So I can see it was shot on the 17th of April, 2015 with an X-Pro1 with a 56 mil. In this case, at 2.2. So I can see all that sort of information, but just for the sake of argument, you can see as I scroll through, it's pretty quick even on a pretty slow MacBook Air. And these are the RAF files. I've not had to do anything. I've had this photo mechanic for years and actually I've not even updated it. What I do then, as I go through, my preference, I just hit the one if it's something I wanna delete. So I go through, hit the one. Now, I'm gonna do it just for the sake of it. I'm not you know, choosing the actual ones I'm gonna delete or anything like that. You know, they're just random ones. And then if I go to the bottom, you can see the color scale. If I press this one here, it then will show me just the ones I've selected. Then I can control A to select all, control backspace, delete selected photos. I can hit that, it goes straight through. That's instead of doing it this way, if you open up the file and you go, I don't want that one, backspace, then you've got to press that and you keep going through. It's just a little bit slower. So I like to just hit that one because look at that, I can hit the ones as quick as I need to and I'm through. But what if I get to an image and I think, well, I'm not sure if that's a keeper or not. Is it in focus? Well, I can hit a Z to go in and we can see that one not quite where we want it to be, and then we can just hit to get rid of it or add it to the <laughs> queue to delete. It's dead simple and dead fast, and that's the point. You don't wanna be spending so much time culling that you lose time on the most important bit, editing. So if we escape out of that, we can see the whole lot again. Remember, 
I'm using one and that's just my particular preference. You can rate them in different ways. In fact, you might want to rate your favorites and you can click down on the image and get a star rating, which will also transfer across the bridge. Talking about bridge, if you look here, I've not long opened it up and it's still bringing everything into play. And as you can see, for me, bridge for culling is just too slow. I do use bridge afterwards to review stuff and to open up into camera raw, but for the first stage, the editing stage, a bit too slow for me. As you can see, bridge just taking up a whole bunch of time. So let's get rid of that for the moment and go back to Photo Mechanic. Photo Mechanic does have a whole lot of culling features and as you saw, much faster than Bridge. Now occasionally, you might try and do it in Finder. You can't easily select, delete and do all the ingestion, all the ratings, all the sort by stuff. You just don't have the same power as you do with something like Photo Mechanic. Now there are other pieces of software out there which will do a decent job to this is not the only method. Let us know what you use in the comments below. If you're a fan of Photo Mechanic, cool. Let us know what other features you use in there because as we said, there's a whole bunch of stuff. The software is a lot more powerful than simply ingesting, which we didn't show, and culling in my quick, simple manner. There's a lot more that can be done such as FTP and stuff, and you can send them to edit nice and easy. You can apply stationary to it, all that good stuff. But what do you use? In the next episode of Fuji X After The Shot, we're gonna take a look at what I would do next. So would I use Adobe DNG converter to get them RAV files where I want them, or would I use something else? Stay tuned.